bought this Cobb Premier Cooker well over a year ago from a 2020 van tour of Scotland. Then along came the COVID pandemic, I had to self-isolate, so it's just been sitting in the back of the van since then. However, I'm just getting the van prepped for this season for when the travel restrictions are lifted, so I thought I'd give it a try and see if it lives up to the hype. Time to see what I got for my 130 Galactic credits. I bought the starter pack with the bag, which will be really useful for storing in the van. First out of the bag is the stainless steel lid, which is quite high so that you can roast food in the cob. However, I found out after I bought it that to be able to roast properly with the cob, you actually have to spend more money with them. Next up is what cob describe as a general purpose Teflon coated grill plate. And as you can see, it's not actually a classic barbecue grill. You get a handle that works with the grill plate and uh, apparently this also works with a lot of the other accessories that you're probably going to want to buy. I'll talk about why I think most people will want to buy more cob accessories a bit later in the video. The fire basket for the charcoal is uh, stainless steel again, extremely well made. Uh, but as you'll see, it's only ever going to heat directly the centre of the grill plate. The stainless steel in a bowl is really robust. The fire basket goes in the middle and there's a moat all the way around. You can cook food in that or put liquids in if you're doing a roast. Again, the stainless steel mesh base unit is really well made and there are enough of these silicon lugs to make sure that the heat doesn't transfer onto the work surface. First impressions out of the box are that it's extremely well made, nicely engineered uh, and the way it all fits together is quite reassuring. There are loads of videos on YouTube showing how to use the cob and getting the best out of it. And one of the things I found was that if you want to roast, then you can't really put the food directly onto the Teflon grill plate. And the reason for that is if you've got the food in there for an hour or two, then it's just going to burn on the bottom. So what many people recommend is you get one of these fenced roast racks, which lifts the food off the grill plate and means the air can circulate. Of course, what this does mean is you're spending more money with them. So the 130 Galactic credits is now near 150. And if you want the classic barbecue experience, then it's another 40 Galactic credits for the Cobb Premier Griddle. Although you're probably going to want to buy the barbecue kit first. Anyway, time to give it a go. As is the way of it with these things, my first attempt was an absolute total failure. For some reason, I was desperate to see if I could roast some potatoes in the moat. So I thought why not have uh, roast duck, roast potatoes and roast veg. And having watched a couple of videos on YouTube, I'd managed to convince myself I knew what I was doing. So I shoved the potatoes in and left them for an hour. I seared the duck and then put everything on the tray. The plan being to finish everything off on the grill plate at the end. Which was, of course, a total beginner's error because all the best heat had been expended in the first hour. But of course there just wasn't enough heat left after two hours. So then it was just a walk of shame to the oven in the house, uh, put it at 180 for 10 minutes and it was all good. The roast potatoes were a bit overdone so lesson learned there too. Second attempt, basically repeat but this time with a nice piece of Scottish mackerel. As with the first attempt, I got the potatoes in the moat when the charcoal was getting going. It's very many years since I did any serious barbecuing, but I'm starting to remember why I used to do it every time the weather was good. The potatoes were in there for just over an hour, they were perfect. Fish, cauliflower and carrots for 45 minutes. And the rest of the veg just took half an hour. I realise that my eyes are too big for my stomach and I'm preparing too much food, but I think you'd struggle to prepare food for more than two people, given the size of the grill. Of course you can buy the dome extension, but that's another 25 galactic credits. Either way, it was a much better result this time. My third attempt, which was a bit of a meat fest, came out really well. The flavours were really good and everything was ready at the same time. However, I was a bit underwhelmed by the speed and the sizzle of the meat cooking. 
and I had to put the lid back on to cook it through despite the charcoal burning at maximum temperature. So probably a good time to talk about the elephant in the room. Is the cob in its basic form actually a barbecue? Well, probably no and maybe yes, depending on what you expect from a barbecue. If you're a big fan of indirect barbecuing like roasting and smoking your food then the answer is going to be a yes. But if, like me, you favour the traditional barbecue experience of cooking food over a direct heat and flames, then the answer is going to be a no. As it stands, the cob's a grill plate, which is heated by charcoal over less than 30% of its surface area, so the food is necessarily cooked by indirect heat. On the plus side, that means you can have the oven function. Final attempt for this week was pizza, which turned out to be really good. Before even thinking about buying the Cobb Pizza Stone, I got a 20 centimetre baking tin. I bought a couple of small pieces for bases and some garlic filled dough balls. I let the charcoal get going for 30 minutes before putting the lid on and leaving that on for 10 minutes before putting the first pizza in. At which point everything was as hot as it could be. I put the second pizza in as soon as the first one came out and I put the dough balls in as soon as the second pizza came out just to make sure that it never cooled down. The crust of the first pizza was a bit dry, so uh, 20 minutes was plenty enough. So after only using it for four times, what do I think about the cob? If you've watched the whole of the video, you'll notice the process has not just been about me trying the cob, but it's also been about learning to barbecue again. I started off stamping my little foot about the lack of a traditional barbecue grill and the small charcoal bed, but that's down to me not fully understanding what I was buying in the first place. But after less than a week, I'm a convert. I really enjoy using it. I think it's got loads of potential. That said, it is expensive and the need to buy more kit like the roasting rack means that it would be very easy to double the cost of the basic setup. The other side of that argument is that you've got a food system that can do way more than a traditional barbecue once you start buying the extra bits. And given how well made it is and the materials, it should last for a very long time. Needless to say, the barbecue kit is now at the top of my wish list.